What is up guys? Today we're in our training center. I've got my whole team behind me. These guys have been here all winter working on building and tearing down water features. They just finished a really nice little pondless waterfall, which is a disappearing waterfall. I'll get more into that. But today we're gonna to talk pondless waterfalls. That is a disappearing waterfall. So essentially what's happening is we're creating a natural looking stream and waterfall with rock work, but below ground is the reservoir where there would usually be a pond. This does a number of things for us. So it allows us to create something that's very low maintenance. It's very safe because there's no big body of water and it's super easy to take care of. So what these guys are all gonna do today is we're gonna tear this apart. Then they're gonna go step by step and we're gonna follow them as we, we show the whole process of putting in a disappearing waterfall. So stick around, it should be pretty cool. For this particular waterfall, we're gonna use what's called an aqua basin. It's a preformed unit. It basically just creates a water storage area. This is a compartment that houses our pump. We're gonna use a 2,000 gallon an hour aqua surge pump. That's gonna go inside here, hooked up to the plumbing. This has been in and out of the ground so many times here at the training center, that's why it's so dirty. We actually have this tied into the side of the unit using a bulkhead. So the bulkhead gives us the ability to penetrate liner or plastic and still make a watertight seal where we can screw fittings into it. And then we go to our flex PVC line, which gets glued in. So we've got a really good connection going in there. So that's the reservoir that's going into the ground. Some of the other materials we're using is we have this uh, non-woven poly fabric. This is gonna protect our liner. Once the excavation happens, this goes in first. Then we're gonna use our 45 mil EPDM rubber liner. Stuff is really flexible, molds into the shape of the excavation really nicely. It's tough stuff. This is what's gonna actually hold the water into the water feature. Now to start our waterfall, we're using something called a pondless spillway. So it just gives us basically a diffuser. So instead of just having a pipe sticking out at the top of the waterfall and water just shooting out of it, the water will actually come into the back of this. It goes into a chamber and there's a little plastic wall in here that it forces it around and that diffuses the water so it's not coming out super strong and it spreads it out and lets it come out evenly across this whole face. Now when this is installed, it's gonna provide the ability for us to, to diffuse the water but it's also gonna be completely hidden so you won't see any of these components when it's finished. And lastly, but not least, is the back breakers, the boulders. That's what's gonna give us our aesthetic and make everything look like a natural water feature. Now we're gonna take all these pieces and turn them into something beautiful. Let's get started. Okay, our first order of business is to install the reservoir. So what's gonna happen now is the guys are gonna bring the reservoir in and we're gonna place it on the ground where we wanna put it. We're gonna spray out around it so we can mark the excavation and then we can figure out how deep we have to go from there. The next step is pretty important. So step two, we're gonna determine our elevation for our reservoir. So that's gonna give us the top of where the water comes in and actually the bottom of what the actual reservoir is into the ground. So in order to do that, we've gotta figure out, is there a patio close by? Are we working off a lawn area? For this demonstration, we're working inside the sandbox. We're gonna use the top rail of the sandbox, which is these railroad ties, as our finished elevation, as if it were a patio. So essentially what we want to do is have the top of our reservoir about three inches below the actual patio level. What that's going to do is allow us enough room to put some gravel and some rock work in there and we're not going to see the plastic tub anymore. Now we use a laser measuring device which we have a unit over there that's transmitting a laser to a receiver. It's going to tell us the height of the laser and we can work off the bottom of our stick. Now from there we can go up and down an elevation into our excavation to get the right height for our reservoir installation. If you don't have the use of a laser, then you can use a four foot level with some stakes, set up a benchmark point and measure off of that, or perhaps some string lines, or maybe even a water level, whatever you have at your disposal. But getting that elevation off of the patio or the lawn is gonna be crucial to the way this all turns out. Thank you. 
Our reservoir is in now. The guys have got it leveled up. It's sitting nice and flat. Now the next step is to install our plumbing. We're gonna do an excavation from the reservoir up to the top of the waterfall. From there, we'll install our waterfall spillway. Now we're ready to install our waterfall spillway. So for this, we're gonna be installing about two feet above our reservoir is the top of our waterfall. So in order to determine that, we're gonna to have to know the elevation of the top of our reservoir, and then we're gonna build up our berm on the backside so that we have about two feet from bottom to top. Now again, we have a laser level, so we can shoot our, ele our elevation on top of the reservoir, and then we can shoot our elevation at the top of the berm and we'll know that we've got two feet. Now, if you don't have a laser level, you can set up a stake again next to your reservoir and pull a string across to the top of your berm. So if you measure up two feet from your reservoir to the height in your stake, put the string there, you can pull a nice level string across and then you can set your elevation for your top waterfall. You'll be using the, the soil from your excavation and your reservoir to build your berm You'll have to compact it with a hand compactor or some sort of other compaction tool to make sure you don't get any settling later on. Our berm is in place, it's been compacted, we're ready to go, we're gonna set our spillway on top. This is how we're gonna start our waterfall. Our plumbing is gonna come into the backside of the spillway. Now our, our height is determined for the top of our waterfall. We can start shaping our berm for where the waterfalls are going. Then they'll be followed by our fabric and our liner and the spillway will actually sit inside the liner so everything is encapsulated and watertight. So our reservoir's in, our plumbing's in, our waterfall spillway is set to height, and we've excavated the shelves from where the waterfalls are going. Now we can install our underlayment, install our liner, set up the spillway so that it's all hooked up to the plumbing and the liner, and then we can actually get to the fun stuff, which is building waterfalls. Our liner's in, we're ready to put our spillway in. That's gonna go on top of our liner, and then we're actually gonna do a connection at the back of the spillway where there is a built-in bulkhead. I'm gonna show you how that goes in. I could almost do a whole tutorial just on hooking up plumbing, but we're gonna quickly go over how to put the spillway in in this scenario. At the back of our waterfall spillway unit, there's gonna be a threaded piece, which is actually a bulkhead. So it comes with two rubber washers, and a threaded nut. This is reverse thread, so don't try and screw it on clockwise. It won't tighten. Counterclockwise is how you tighten it. The first rubber washer will go onto our bulkhead. Then we're gonna be cutting our liner and squeezing that over. Our second rubber washer will go on, sandwiching the liner in between the two rubber washers. And finally, the threaded nut goes on and squeezes it all together. That makes our watertight seal. Okay, now we've got all the bones of our water feature in place. Our reservoir's in, our liner's in, our spillway's in, and our plumbing is in. Now we can focus on the fun stuff. That's rock work, creating the waterfalls. This is gonna rely on you and your imagination and your level of skill set. So today, what we're gonna focus on is building a waterfall that's about six feet long, about two feet of elevation. We wanna get three to four drops in that space and maybe even a split somewhere in there. So we're gonna let the guys go to town, have some fun. Let's check it out. All right, we did it. The guys built a beautiful pondless waterfall. Let me show you what they came up with. Here's the reservoir that they installed. That's the aqua basin. You can see left the edge exposed just so you could see for demonstration purposes, the actual reservoir, but the rest of it completely camouflaged. So from the bottom here, 
it goes up about two feet of elevation, which you can see, we've got four nice cascades in there over two feet. You don't need a whole lot of height to make something impressive. It goes back about six feet from here to the start of where the spillway is. Here's that spillway completely camouflaged. They've got a spill rock here, and then they did some disguise work with some driftwood, some moss. So now when it's finished, if this were gonna be landscaped, you'd probably have some plants growing over the tops of these rocks and it would just completely disappear, making it look like it just came straight out of nature. Top section, they've got a nice pooling area, water collection, so if you wanted to put some aquatic plants in here or have a place for birds to do some, some bathing or drinking out of, that's a great spot for that. And you can see as it goes down, another little pooling area here, all the way to the bottom. And this is only in a six foot space. Really turned out nice. So I love the water features that we're building here. Um, what I love even more is the fact that these guys are just getting better and better every single day. The benefit of the training center is, you know, just us getting in here every day and uh, learning as we go. Every day we come up with, um, you know, new ideas and we try different things out and it's, uh, it's just great practice. We're only a couple weeks in. I just started here at Atlantis and uh, having the uh, sandbox here has been a great learning uh, tool to be able to get accustomed to what we're doing. So when we actually get out there with the customers, a little bit more experience. Well, no matter what, uh, you're always gonna make mistakes, especially when you're talking about just starting out. So having this training center here is really beneficial because you, you get the bulk of your mistakes out of the way and you get to learn something before going out in the field. It's, it's really a, a huge bonus having this. Um, it's been great in here. We've, we've all been um, really learning the every step of the process and not getting into the same job each time that we're doing it. So we're all kind of learning every aspect of it and that, that makes us move a little quicker now that we're knowing we're getting it down a little bit more and it's, it's again, great to have this space to use. Hey, Bully, you're up. <laughs> no, thank you. I didn't think we were getting Bully on this one. And there you have it, folks. Another one in the books. I feel like today was more like a tutorial than a vlog, but I tried to mix it in there. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, going over that whole process with building the pond, this water feature, if it's something you're gonna take on yourself, I hope everything that we showed you today helps give you an idea exactly what's involved. It's a fun, cool project if you're gonna take it on. But as long as you keep all the things in mind that we talked about, it should be a success. If you liked what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button. Leave me a like, give me a comment, give me some feedback, what you thought about today, and if you got anything from it, and we'll see you on the next one. I, I, I,